Now in the last video, I talked about the demand curve. On this video, I'll talk about the changes on the demand curve. Now there are two things that you need to know about the changes on the demand curve. The first point is when the demand increases, the demand curve shifts right. And when the demand decreases, the demand curve shifts left. How I remember these two points is by taking the acronym of of demand increase and, and right. So for the first point, the demand increases and it shifts right. So I just say that I just use the acronym DIR or DIR to help me remember that when demand increases, it shifts right. And similarly, for when demand decreases and the demand curve shifts left, I use the acronym DDL. Now, there are six main factors that change demand. The price of related goods, the expected future prices, expected future income and credit, population, prices, and income. And I will talk about each of these briefly. Now, let's bring up the colors. And let's use red. So, the first point, the price of related goods. Two things you need to know are, the first thing is substitute. We all know what the substitute is. When we were younger and our teacher got sick, we would have a substitute teacher come in. Someone who can replace the teacher. And that's exactly what this is. A substitute is when a good can be replaced, can be replaced by another good. So for example, uh, we, we can have burgers and we can have hot dogs. We can have hot dogs. My perfect drawing of hot dog here. And these are substitute because we can pick a burger or we can pick a hot dog. So these are substitutes. Another thing, the second point is a complement. And what a complement is, is it's a good that can be used with another good. So it's a good that can be used with another good. An example of this would be uh, hot dogs and french fries. So hot dogs and french fries. These two items go well together so they are complements. So what I'm going to discuss now is the relationship between these two concepts. So let's use this example. So when the price of a burger goes up, what will happen? Or when the price of a complement goes up, price of complement goes up, uh, what will happen? The complement being the fries. And the burger is the substitute of a hot dog. Sub of hot dog. Okay, so when the price of a burger goes up or the price of the complements goes down what do you think will happen to the two hot dogs well the price of burgers go up so then the burgers got more expensive and the price of the complements went down so that, that gives us all the more reason to buy more hot dogs so for hot dogs the demand goes up because it's more expensive to buy burgers and 
for compliments, the price decreased, so then there's more demand. And when this happens, the demand curve changes. So let's say that this is our original demand curve for hot dogs. And this is the price and this is the quantity. When the event happened that the price of burgers went up and the price of complement decreased, the demand curve shift for hot dogs. So this is the demand curve for hot dogs originally. But when the burger price went up and the price of complement went down, the, the demand curve changed and it became a new demand curve. And since, let's say the quantity here is zero, so then if this is the quantity, if this quantity is like 2 million and then the demand curve shifted to the right that means there there was an increase in demand so then the increase could be 10 million or 10 or 8 million to 10 million hot dogs the second thing that can change expected future prices or yeah the second thing that can change the demand curve is expected future prices and this concept is pretty simple. For expected future prices, for expected future prices, the thing is when the prices is expected to go up, expected to rise in the future so the price expected to rise in the future well then the current demand 